Hey everyone, this is Jason here and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about exposure with Nikon cameras and this is true with with just about all of the newer Nikon cameras that have multiple autofocus points. I've been testing out my new Nikon D4 but this uh, holds true for D3s and D200s and, and even D2s. So what I want to show you here is a range of test shots that I just grabbed. It's a kind of a gloomy overcast day today so I look out my backyard and look into the neighbor's yard and this is what we see and I set my camera up on a tripod and I took a bunch of different shots now if you look at these and we have the histogram up here I'm in view NX2 just so you can see everything uh, we can look at the exposure I got 1 1 25th of a second at uh, f8 here and I was in aperture priority ISO 200 and so the only thing here that can possibly change would be the shutter speed. So if I go between these test shots, you start looking at those histograms, you'll notice, hey, this one's a little darker. This is 1 250th of a second at f8. And this one's 1 100th of a second at f8. So what's going on here? Why am I getting different exposures of the exact same scene? The answer has to do with Nikon's 3D matrix metering. And if you read the manual on the metering, they'll tell you that it biases towards the subject. Well, how does the camera know what the subject is? The answer lies with your autofocus points. The Nikon meter, is, the matrix meter, is biased to expose to the active autofocus points. So let me turn on the autofocus point view there's the red autofocus point and now you can see between as I scroll between the images what the difference was so here 1 1 25th of a second I'm on this little area here in the image but if I go to this dark area that net that is 1 1 60th of a second here 1 1 60th of a second if I go to the brighter toned house now I'm at 1 2 50th of a second same thing here and if I go down to the bottom down to the dark shadows where this fence is notice it really opened it up I'm at 1 100th of a second so you can see the sky gets uh, significantly blown out this is important if you're working on landscape photography um, most of the time this technique is great and especially if you're doing it with people you don't have to worry about anything because you put the focus point on their face and it's and if their face is bright it, it gets a good exposure for people and the subject in the scene the camera is making the right assumption but when you've got a landscape that might have a variety of tones in it maybe you're trying to fo focus on a foreground and a lot of times that in the early morning hours that foreground might be in the dark it might be in fair shade so so if you focus that there and take your image the, the meter is going to open up for those shadows thinking that that's what you want to prioritize on so oftentimes what I will do in the field will be to focus on the subject of interest with camera on the tripod use the focus point and then I might move the focus point up here to a lighter tone in the image maybe even part of the sky so that it exposes for the highlights and I do this without recomposing without having to lock exposure or anything like that and this works well when you're using any of the automatic exposure modes like aperture priority exposure uh, you can take the shot you can see the difference it might vary by up to two-thirds of a stop uh, and if you then need to add in exposure compensation do over whatever you can but if you're getting mixed exposure results and you're not sure what's going on Consider that. Consider focusing on one subject, locking the focus, and then moving your focus point to a brighter area to expose for those highlights with your matrix meter. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.